some more properties. So we've just shown the variance of epsilon prime. Now let's talk about the sum of squares. So the sum of squares for this, the residual sum of squares, is going to be, in this case, it's going to be exactly like what we're used to seeing because this is in the form of our ordinary least squares. So it'll just be the y prime minus x prime beta transpose times y prime minus x prime beta. And so we can write this because we know that all these primes just mean that we've multiplied by s inverse uh, in front of each of these different components. And so I can just plug those in here. So I can plug in for y prime, I can plug in s inverse y in these two spots. And for x prime, I can plug in x, uh, s inverse x. And now I can actually pull, because each of these components has an s inverse, I can pull these out. And so here I'm going to pull out s inverse and I'm going to transpose it. So that's what this s negative transpose means right here. So I'm taking this s inverse out from both of these components, pulling it out here. And then I'm going to pull out the s inverse from these components as well and put it here. So now I have y minus x beta transpose times x s inverse transpose times s inverse times y minus x beta. So we're starting to look closer to the residual sum of squares that we're used to. And if you recall, the whole point of doing this, of pulling out uh, s and s um, transpose, was that s times s transpose is equal to sigma. And sigma is that uh, known variance component that, that gives us the structure of our, of our variance between our errors. And so s uh, inverse transpose times s inverse is equal to sigma inverse. And so this is the residual sum of squares that we're minimizing in this case. So when we're doing y prime equals x prime beta plus epsilon prime, the thing we're minimizing is y minus x beta transpose times this sigma inverse times y minus x beta. And so what I want you to do now is I want you to take the minimum or minimize this y minus x beta transpose sigma inverse y minus x beta with respect to beta so that you can calculate the estimate of beta hat under this GLS or generalized least squares model. And as a reminder, you can remember how we did this for least squares in the matrix review lecture. If you go onto the course website and look at these slides, this is actually a clickable link that will take you directly to the matrix review lecture. Um, but you also could just go uh, back and, and uh, back to, to find that matrix review lecture as well. So go ahead and show all the steps to uh, minimize this quantity with respect to beta to calculate the estimate for beta hat and add that to your content assessment.rmd uh, file that we're going to be working up to submitting by the end of this uh, course.